a one, two, three. We are not live, but we are alive. Gary and Russell, we've got a new man in the house, a lovely, lovely artiste, who today is going to be teaching you the value of a single stitch. Oh, it sounds like it's going to be fun, Russell. It sounds like it's going to be fun. Lovely YouTuber. If you do like what we do today, please make sure that you give us a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel and write any comments because then the algorithm thinks, oh, these people are interesting. And then they shove us out there into the real world. And then everybody gets to join in with this mindful sewing stuff. Uh, so do that, if you will, please, for us. Uh, but of course, on this channel, if you are new to us, let me explain what we do. We do a lovely mindful creative activity. Uh, we usually have a little chat about mindfulness at the beginning. Uh, we'll be doing that with Russell today. If, however, you're not interested in the chat, if you just think, I want to get in with the sewing, all you have to do is look at the time code below and you can go straight to our sewing exercise and discover what is the value of a single stitch. So down below, see you in a bit. But if you are staying with us, welcome to the Tea Time Studio, lovely Russell Barrett. <laughs> so um, obviously, you know, Gary and I are here every week, Russell, banging the drum for mindfulness and mindful creativity. And you are one of our lovely tutors at Crafty Monkeys. We've had a nice class with you, got another one coming up in November. Uh, but I have seen you on your Instagram doing a lot of hand sewing on trains and buses and just whenever you can, really. And I thought Russell is the man to bring on as our, it, you're our first guest here. We've got a lot of guests lined up oh. now. So you're our first guest. Thanks very much. <laughs> um, but you, you know, you sprung to mind straight away because I just thought, like I say, I've seen you doing your mindful sewing and I wanted to get mm. your take on why you find sewing to be such a lovely calming thing to do and why you choose to do it over looking through your social media or whatever we all do these days mm. um, and I should say that Russell's Instagram handle is Russell James Barrett I'll put the link below and he is an amazing sewer yes or a sewist um, a quilter but also an artist as well I mean I love your crazy things you'll just like create a hat and it will just be something I will want to wear that's madness, but I love it. And um, obviously you work heavily with sustainability and you are an award winner, Russell, because you just got an award yes. at the Quilts, didn't you? Yeah, I did, I did. Yes. Ooh. So give us a little intro into yourself, uh, Russell, and then we will talk about, you know, your, your mindful sewing practice. So who, who is Russell Barrett? Well, yeah, I mean, I never know whether to say I'm a quilter or just a textile artist, um, depending on who you're speaking to, depending on what they understand by it. But I, um, yeah, I make um, quilts, art quilts, um, or sort of textile collages that are quilted, let's say. Um, I use only um, uh, recycled or upcycled fabrics. Um, so I'm sort of, that's my main sort of focus. Um, but I like to use um, ideally things that I've used in my life that I'm either cutting up or just um, pressing flat and and appliqueing or patchworking or whatever. Um, some of the quilts are usable, some of them are just wall pieces. Um, and I just like to sort of try and think think things through slightly off, off center and try and work with unusual things. Um, so yeah, it's something that I've, I've done for um, quite a while now. Um, I have a background in, making sort of costumes and set design and stuff um and this is just me many years ago i just started using up things that i'd collected because I, I collect a lot of vintage clothes and things and, and fabrics from secondhand shops as i'm sure lots of people do um and this was me just starting to use them so i ended up making um collages with them so uh yeah it's a way to um to express myself um enjoy myself but also uh, to relax as well and to sort of um gain some sort of I don't know centering um it's it's really the only time that I kind of lose myself is when I'm sort of sewing uh losing myself in a good way um and sort of uh you know uh put put the ideas together mm -hmm. yeah. yes Yes, and we'll come to that sort of mindful uh, thing in a yeah. moment. But I just wanted to, um, I'm going to put up a picture of your lovely quilt that won a prize at the Festival of Quilts. Yeah. Because I've got something um, that I wanted to ask you about, actually. But it was the dishwasher tablet thing, wasn't it? What did you say? We <laughs> dishwasher tablet. 
We talk about love, we talk about dishwasher tablets. That's it. We yeah. talk about love, we talk about dishwasher tablets. Now, yeah. I know you said to me that your view on that was um, that it was about a relationship because, you know, in, in sort of, you know, relation, long-term relationships, we do talk about love and all those things, but we also talk about... You have it. to talk about toilet roll and talk about those things but you know what was really interesting and I and I did a little reel on our Instagram feed about art and how we all see um, different things in art and I did a live on our Instagram with John Cole Morgan who took me around the festival of quilts and showed me the competition winners and it was a couple of days after I saw you now I don't know if you saw it or you caught what he said and I didn't I didn't comment on what he said because I thought it's really interesting that he's yeah. got yeah. He, he because he knows that you're into sustainability and he knows about your recycling of old fabrics he commented on your piece and he said oh, I, I love this piece and he said but what's fantastic is that Russell not only is using recycled fabrics as a tea towel in here but he's also talking about what we're putting into the sea because yeah. he said yeah. we're talking about love we're talking about <laughs> dishwasher tablets yes had you made that connotation in your mind or anything I'm presuming that you hadn't at all when you I hadn't it. at all I was I was um a lot of my work is based around domestic settings, either current or when I was a in childhood, um, and my sort of thoughts and views on that. But um, to hear somebody else's view on your work is always interesting. And the fact it was a completely different sort of slant on it, that it was like the, the, the green issues and the, the climate crisis um, was great because that's something that I'm, it's why I use old things to, to make my work um, I'm very interested in. And I was uh, quite pleased with that sort of, uh theory so yeah because yeah. i'd seen you were watching on the live and i thought if he's sitting there and i was gonna go i never even thought about that and like i say i didn't want to say oh well actually it's about this no it takes you all to explain it's yeah, fine it, you know, i it's, like it when it other people matter, does it? We, we all see different things in, in different things really so um i thought that was lovely actually that he thought yeah. that about your piece but it was a lovely lovely piece so let's go back to the mindful sewing then, Russell. And obviously Gary and I now, we, we, you know, we've, we started this channel with our tea time tutorials. And at first I think, um, you know, Gary and I always wanted to have little chats about mindfulness, but we, our activities were, the, the, I, I would say, Gary, I don't know if you agree, they were more kind of mini um, tuition based activities. Yeah. And then as time has gone on, we've been creating more mindful activities. So although some of our things are very simple, you know, if you want to be an amazing watercolor artist, then yeah. don't come here because that's not what we're doing. But if you want to do swooshes of color and lose yourself, then that's what we're doing. Uh, actually, I will say, if you've got Aspire, that you'd like to be a good watercolor. Start with us and we'll just get used to the materials and get that, the re relaxing into creativity. That's what I'm, and we talk about is get, let's relax, let's use creativity as a pleasurable thing rather yes. than a stressful, anxious thing that we've got to get it right, you know? Yeah. I say they're, they're, like, they're bedfellows, the idea of mindfulness and the beginning of learning, or any learning, but the beginning of learning specifically in this case, because you're, a lot of things if you actually go to a college or whatever to a class um there's a pressure and i've been to many many evening classes over the years of various different things and there's always one person that's completely freaked out because they think it's beyond them and it's just like you need to just start and do a little bit and edge yourself forward and get comfortable with holding a pen or a brush or a needle or whatever um and just it's playing essentially it's, it's being a kid and and opening up those kind of ideas and thinking well, may maybe I, this is the only time I ever do this, or maybe I will progress and do 101 things with it. Um, so I, I like that idea. And it does help you relax. It takes and your mind off. So it was, well, we've talked about, you know, sometimes we're comparing ourselves to other people. So if you're in a group like that and you're thinking, oh my God, that person over there is doing so much better than me. And then yeah. you start to compare. <laughs> the other thing which you've just mentioned, which is really important, as soon as you join a course, which has got either a qualification or a grade next yes. to it, then you're you then trying to achieve, you want to achieve. So again, that puts the pressure on a creative activity. Whereas if you just do it for fun and you don't worry about the person next to you doing it or there's no qualification, then yeah. you can relax into it. Yeah. yeah. And Gary has actually said as well, Russell, that you know, through the year, he has seen me improve yes. my skills. So, you know, I mean, I've got that. lots of my lovely pieces on yeah. me. I've got sewing, I've got, and I love coming, you know, sometimes I'll just, I mean, you know, I love this because we did marbles one day and we just literally put marbles. Nice. 
Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. So I was like, oh. And actually, there was another one with flowers, and I went and showed my husband. And he went, "That could actually be a wallpaper designer. He's a graphic designer." He said, "That's yeah, like there you go. amazing." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, thank you very much. You're not the only artist in the family now." <laughs> so, you know, so I have improved my skills, and that's been a, a bonus, really. You know, that that wasn't the idea in the beginning. So, yeah, I, I agree. So, yes, slap my hand for just saying, "Don't come here if you want to be a watercolor artist." It is all about starting. Might be one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Russell, before we move on to the exercise then, let's just talk about this mindful uh, practice that we've just mentioned there that Gary and I have been doing. So, you know, you have, I've seen pictures of you on trains and things doing your mindful sewing. So how long has it been a thing for you? I mean, did you, have you always done this sort of thing or is it in the last Mm -hmm. year as things have got stressful or what what has Um, it been? I mean, it's been, I've always, even right, so even as a kid, obviously you would take, pens and paper and just to keep you quiet so I guess it's it's basically a continuation of that as I said playing um so if I sometimes when if I know I've got a long journey particularly um my train is the best um then I'm like right amazing what can I take and sometimes it's things that I need to do like little bits of um not quilting but applique or whatever and it's like part of a project and other times it's just oh, got to go in 10 minutes, grab a few threads, a needle, um, not always scissors if it's an aeroplane, but um, a, bit of thre- a bit of fabric and um, and just see what comes to mind and, and whether it is just, uh, I love, um, I love sort of almost monotonous re- repetition. So just doing the same stitch over and over again. And it's a way to also um, keep me calm when I'm traveling on flights, because I'm not a good, flyer um because i can just absolutely focus on that and it makes the time go by and um you've also you're creating muscle memory for doing stitches so if there is something like embroidery stitches you want to do um we uh on a holiday around europe we based ourselves in the netherlands and we went on lots of trips and um i was constantly being asked by people on trains like what are you doing what are you doing and uh, it's just fun the conversations you can have um but my main focus is just to as I say, great muscle memory and just to relax and to not get caught up in the stresses of travel or life or whatever. I'm not really a reader, so that's my thing is, is sewing. So yeah, that's why yeah. I do it. And it's amazing. Go on, Gary. Yeah. I was just gonna ask because um I know are you uh, you know you're a guy, I'm a guy, but we like sewing. Yes. And to me it's second instant is it's natural. But people do look on upon you and they look, oh a man sewing. Yeah, all the time. And they find that quite women as well as other men. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you get someone come out of the woodwork and say, "Well, actually, I'm a man and I sew as well. Or I make I make my wife's outfit, or I make I do the curtains at home." But it is it is considered quite unusual, and it shouldn't be. And yeah. how do you find how do you find that? Well, I mean, you often see um, usually women say knitting. And I see, you often see people doing a double take. Oh, that's slightly unusual. You're not sitting in a book or eating crisps or whatever. But when people have said to me, oh, on when we were on our Netherlands holiday, uh, this big, quite older guy, um, he said, oh, excuse me. And he, he knew I was English. He said, excuse me. And I thought, oh, God, here we go. Is it, I hope it's not going to be something negative or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he said, it was a strange thing. He said, what are you, I'm just picking up the video. He said, what are you doing when you, you've threaded your needle what are you doing when you twist it and I said oh I'm just creating a knot on the end and he's like can you show me how you do that and I was like uh yeah okay and I showed him simple like quilt or something and he's like oh that's amazing and he didn't say any more and I didn't ask you anymore but it was just this lovely moment where I'm sitting at a table like yeah you just do this look and he's like oh wow I was just wondering what you were doing which was lovely yeah. <laughs> he might you think he was a secret sewer. Well, I think so. I don't know. Maybe, who knows? I should have maybe asked. But, um, yeah, you do get people asking, or um, it's usually women, though, like, oh, I, I sew myself. Or, and it, everybody's always like, oh, you know, I'm not that good. And you're like, oh, <laughs> doesn't matter. I just keep going. Exactly. Uh, it shouldn't be about how good you are. We did our retreat <laughs> recently, and we had one chap on there actually called Stephen, uh, who had been an actor. And uh, at the end, he said a lovely thing. He said, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. I've been a thorn amongst many roses. 
you know, he, he thought he was in London. He sort of turned up, and you know, he said he just loves sewing, and you know, he had an absolute ball. And I said, I wish there were more men, you know, that would would come out yeah. and, and do this. Um, but another thing as well, you know, Russell, we, um, you know, just talk, talking there about the mindful sewing on a train and things, and, and you mentioned travelling. Um, we, at our retreats, decided for our little trunk show in the evening for Gary and I, we'd actually do a talk about mindful sewing and we'd tell people right. on our YouTube channel. And we had 50 ladies sat there. And so Gary very kindly... One gentleman. Sorry? And one gentleman, and one gentleman, Stephen, um, and we, and Gary very kindly put together a little pack. So they got a piece of um, felt and a needle and some thread. And then we said, "You are going to now create this little flower uh, right. with some French knots, and we're all going to do it together." And now later, and, and everybody joined in, and everybody was loving. You felt this calm coming over the room. Yeah. Everybody sort of rushed to get there from work, and they'd all unpacked their things, and then they were all like, "Oh, who oh, was happening this retreat?" And it was a great way to get everybody into it. But I met this lady um, over the course of the weekend. She was she was an engineer. And she said to me, can I just say, she said, on that Friday night, when I sat down, she said, I'd been traveling all day. She said, I was really tired. And then you said, right, we're going to do some hand sewing. And she said, I thought, oh. <laughs> so no. <laughs> Here we go. And then she said, I'm at work, they make us do mindful things. And I just don't get it. And I'm like, Ugh. And then she said, but I absolutely loved that flower. Yeah. And she said, and I, I found myself just getting into it. And just almost like in a meditative state. And she said, and it was so nice. And she, at the end of 20 minutes, I was like, oh, I feel so calm now and so zen and so ready for the weekend. So yeah, because you close your mind. Your YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. 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 I think people get put off by the word mindfulness sometimes. I think yes. they like, it, it's just focusing. It's just focusing to stop the noise for a minute. And, you know, that's lovely. The sun's getting a bit bright. Yeah. Lovely, Russell, then. Um, we, I always, you know, ask Gary to create the exercise. I send him lots of inspirational things, and then sometimes he'll use them, sometimes I'll come up with new things. And he, he literally, just a few minutes before the class, says to me, right, Rachel, this is what you need. And you did a very similar thing, uh, Russell. I asked you what you needed, and you gave us a sketchy outline. I couldn't find any cle um, uh, sort of like a linen or, a, you know, a beige fabric or whatever you want to call it. Cream. So I've got this piece of orange scrap and just some green thread and you said that's perfect you don't okay. need to have any fancy items so yes. if you want to shall i bring your camera into view yes and replace all of us no pressure with your hands <laughs> so okay talk us through what we've got going on here and what we're going to do so this is this is obviously drawing this is um a value chart that you do in a lot of um sort of art classes or learning design uh, skills um, and it's just imagining um, something very close up and then sort of pulling away. So it's about then it's getting very dense and they, they sort of progress. Um, so I thought we could do it with obviously with stitch. Um, so you're imagining um, even fabric, the way it's woven, when you look up very close and then you're sort of moving away, it's what you see. So you could essentially do it with any with any stitch. Um, but we're just going to stick with the with the single stitch. So it's it's, it's just a very simple either a running stitch or this little seed stitch. Um, so here's the like I prepared earlier. Um, just on a bit of calico. Um, and yeah, we just we just start and we um, make it more dense. Okay. Um, so you can it's, do this with any, so what other kind of stitches could you do? I mean, I'm seeing there, that almost looks in your paper drawing there, Russ, it yes. almost looks like a kind of like a, is that like a blanket stitch or something? Well, this, that's, um, I think we call that a chain stitch. Chain uh, stitch, you're yeah. back with the names, but um, yeah, I mean, you could do a blanket stitch. So it's coming at, uh, it would be like a little uh, sort of L's. Yes. Um, you could do any stitch really. Um, I should have done. I should have done a variety. Um, to be honest, my favourite stitch that I, I do when I'm doing, you know, sort of quote unquote named stitches is the little seed stitch. Um, I like the kind of the movement of it and the sort of uh, confetti vibe of it. Um, so I thought we would start with with this one. Although I mean, obviously anybody could do anything they prefer. Um, the idea of it is that you would draw squares onto your fabric and then yes. you, you, the whole meditative process really is it is the same stitch but you're just going 
Left. It's just yeah, filling so, the square, basically. Yeah. So, I mean, you can do any shape, but what I've done here, I think you can almost see it. Um, I've drawn little squares, just hand done without a, without a ruler, um, and then uh, just started filling it. Um, so you can come to the edges, um, and it looks quite nice eventually. Sometimes if the pencil uh, comes away, then you've got, um, there's an, uh, I've got this one I did uh, a while a while back, which I'll just reach over and show you. Um, there's a variety of stitches, but these ones, they're very dense and the pencil sort of faded away. So you can yeah. sort of, uh, it gets a nice effect. Um, and then possibly, eventually if you're wanting to do it again, you could do it, try it without the box and see if you can keep it within a box. Um, let me just move, I've got a fan here. Um, so, shall we begin? Yes. 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 I'm so, ready. I've got another oh. sheet of fabric oh. here. Uh, just plain calico. Let me move these over. So, we're just drawing three or four little boxes. So, about an inch square? Or yes, yeah. perfect, perfect. Small square, anywhere. Yeah, just in a row, so it sort of you get the uh, the density progression, you know. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it, um, Russell? Because you're obviously left-handed, and you've started from that side going across, and I'm right-handed, and I started from the you're opposite. You're going the other way. Yeah. Which side did you start from, Rachel? I went from the left to the right. Oh, I went from right to left because, but I'm right-handed as well. I don't know. Maybe so, I was looking at what Russell was doing. Yes, yeah, so I, I started the other way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just trying to get the light, I was trying to get the lighting better because it's, it's, um, oh, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Um, I'm just aware that there's going to be shadow now every time I move. Sorry, don't worry. No. Um, so and that's very good squares. You're very good at drawing squares. They, mine are a little bit sketchy. Yours look great. I've got a square envy. <laughs> Fair envy. I've got balance. That's the top of my list. Yeah, you can hardly see so, mine, but yeah, mine are a little bit. Um, hang on. They're all right. Yeah, they're not oh, bad. They're not bad. They're not bad. So <laughs> okay. So we we're just using. Um, I've actually got uh, tapestry needles, but um, just just any needle really. Yeah. Um, with uh, this is just pearl cotton. Um, it's quite nice to have the contrast, so I'm just doing black on white, but you can honestly get nice effects from any old colour. I think I did blue, yeah, I did blue on that one. Um, yeah. So then, I am going to start with the, uh, the least dense version, because I found that easier to get more dense, but That's interesting. you could do it the other way. Are you going to do it the other way? No, I'll go the way you go. <laughs> okay. Um, so when I'm doing this, I'm always thinking, trying to think, obviously in advance, uh, that you don't want them to be too close. So I try to think the length of what the stitch that you're doing, you sort of want the next one to be roughly two um, widths away of the stitch that you've already done. Now this is interesting as well, Gary, isn't it? Because you've mentioned this before in our sewing and you've called it um, mind measuring, haven't you? Yes. You with uh, the stitch. So you're trying to look by eye and in your mind where you think it's going to go, where the next stitch is going to be and what it would look like. Yes. This sort of seed stitch, you can go in all either all directions. So could you, because you're, are you going around the outside first or? Um, I I'm sort of just going to go up, up and down in 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 columns almost. Right. Oh, that's good because um, obviously there's, there's, you've got to have some sort of methodology to be able to achieve this sort of scattered look. So yeah, it is a bit of a challenge actually because sometimes you've done a I don't know three or four stitches and you suddenly go oh gosh I've, they're all going the same way. <laughs> yes, which you is know, great. And again, be, oh, that well. is making you think. So your brain is then having to concentrate that it's not they are all going in different directions and they are spaced apart enough um and again that stops you thinking of paying the electric bill or have i you know what's for tea you're thinking about this now aren't you yeah and i guess the mind naturally tries to find patterns so you have to sort of click out of that um 
that sort of uh, skill. What I like about this as well is it's very simple. Um, you know that I, you know, I'm I'm only just beginning my stitching journey, and yet this is something I can definitely do. Yes, uh, but also it does make you feel very creative and like you're an artist because you are sort of designing your own little panels as you go. But as you say, very calm, very meditative. There's no pressure here. Mm -mm. You know, no. I was it's actually early, when I did that the practice one. Um, I've started on a new a new thing um, that I promised myself I wouldn't start anything new, but hey ho. Um, that I was like, I might do little squares all over it uh, instead of like actual quilting per se and just basically do this all over it. Yeah. So have you started on the second one now? So I've started on the next oh, one. Well ahead of the game. Look at that. So do you, I was, all I was going to say is as you, as I've sort of like, I think I've sort of finished one square. Should I? Yeah. Um, I, I'm sort of like not off behind, or do I just take the thread to the next square? I, I've just been a bit lazy and just taken it. If you can see the back there, I've just taken ah, it. Yeah, right. I um, like lazy. I am <laughs> lazy. <laughs> just because it, it keeps the flow if you don't have to keep yes. starting. Right. So that you have to add more thread every so often. So now we're oh. on the second one. We've got to add more stitches this time. Is that? Yes. So right. trying to think um, maybe just one length apart or a length and a half apart roughly. right it's a little bit more dense a little bit more yeah. close together love it oh i'm running out of thread on there so i'm just going to do a couple of tacking stitches on the back to hold that i've been very uh, professional this time and pre-threaded lots of needles uh, <laughs> oh, that is hold good. on for us Keep up. don't go too fast <laughs> oh i wish i'd known to do that <laughs> love it see this is where it gets interesting now because you say now you have to try and make your stitch more dense uh, yes you can I you can make the stitches slightly smaller and just do more of them yes which is sometimes quite helpful. I like it. And of course, we're sort of whizzing through, but you know, you could really take your time with this, couldn't you? Oh, you could, you could. I mean, you could do bigger areas as well if you wanted yeah. to. You could even do um, lettering. You could do somebody's name or something and, um, you know, do the date and fill in the, fill in the gaps with it. Yeah. I was showing Nicholas Ball my flower stitching last week at the retreat. Oh, yeah. But I did have a joke because as I held it in the camera, I could see that he could just see the back of it. And I went, yeah, it's not that good from behind. And he started laughing and said, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> didn't really? look quite as nice. And then he said, you should enter it somewhere. I said, maybe the Festival of Quilts. And he just straight away said, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, so rude. <laughs> oh, outrageous. But right. perfect. I've got to, I've done my second one now. I bet you're on your, th oh no, you see the, Russell's I've well ahead, he's on his third one already. Oh it's wow, I'm only halfway through my second. It's not a race, this is what I need to tell myself, so. It's, yeah, it's not, it's not. You see, I've just been mindful in it and do, you two are racing along. You obviously Which haven't you, learned. How far have you learned. got, Rachel? <laughs> I'm halfway through my second square. And you've got different colours. So what thread, colour thread did you have there? I've got green. Green, nice. But I'm going to run out soon. Oh no, I don't want to throw. But not another threading nightmare. Oh, another nightmare. <laughs> now I'm just using um, on my squares, Russell. Just I've, I've got this orange piece of cotton. But yeah. do you think that there is a, a best um, material to use to do this? Because I'm thinking mine's quite flimsy, actually. So well, because I've just gone across and I haven't knotted off. It's quite easy to pull too hard, and then it all starts to get a bit yeah. tight. You've got to remember tension. I mean, if if you're if you're not sort of well well practiced at, at hand sewing, um, I would try and use uh, like felt or a, a calico, something that's got a bit of stiffness to it, so you can hold yeah. it comfortably. Um, and when you're doing it, um, the the trick is to not 
like obviously if you can see there where I'm, you know if I pull that everything just gathers so you have to keep a certain um, looseness to it and not uh, not pull the the stitches through too hard and it'll uh, if your fabric's got a certain density to it it'll keep it loose I was using in a previous um, tutorial some little um, samples of wadding, you know, those little square samples. Yeah. They were quite good um, yeah. from Blyseline. So that's. I've, I've done things like this before where I've essentially, so this sort of size, but it's actually a mini quilt and I've pinned it. So I've got the wadding and a backing and done sort of embroidery into it as a practice thing. Um, because it's quite interesting if you love if you love quilting, it's quite interesting to see what what needles and what threads um, might pull the batting through. Yes. And, and sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And I, I sort of it's nice to experiment with things like that rather than do it on a, a thing you want to be precious with. You know? So what's next for you, Russell? What are you are you working on anything at the moment? Is that do you have plans for anything for festival next year? Because I know a lot of people, as soon as the, the, the festival is over, they start thinking about their next piece. What can I do? No, I I haven't uh, specifically thought for that, but I constantly, I mean I've said this to you before, I constantly have a real revolving door of projects. Yes. Um, that as I, well as I said, even today when I was getting out fabric for this, I've already started on something new and I was like. Russell, just calm down. Uh, you don't need to start something today. Um, but I've got a few things on on the on the go. Um, I'm doing lots of strips and sewing them together. And where do you get um, your inspiration from, Russell? Is it yeah, you know, from walking through every, the streets or everywhere and anywhere? Um, everywhere and anywhere yeah. It's it's often nature. I I mean, speaking about mindfulness, um, I like to it, not every day necessarily, but I try and get out. Um, a little walk and there's a few canals near um near us so I, I do try and they say if you go on the fit is it water for like 20 minutes or something it's good for your brain yes I read that the other day um so I try to do that and go and look at some nature and ducks and whatever but there's always something I mean even the stitch we're doing is very like say little little bugs or bacteria or you know bits on the floor you know there's um there's so many things. I mean, just wandering about when you see, I like interesting combinations of, you know, like strange graffiti with the lines on bricks or just stuff like that. But yeah, it's a nice combo. I'm just moving on to my last. Oh, uh, look out. <laughs> I had to thread my needles. So that took me at least another 20. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I have an excuse. I'm growing a wee bit smaller with these to try and make them a bit denser. It's funny though, the more dense you get, obviously, the more thread it takes. So yes, the first two right. I managed to get with one sort of from one length of thread. Now my third one is going to I've now done really, I haven't got enough to carry on to the second one. So I'm just going to reload for my final one. But it's, that, it's making me think, you know, it's making me, it's very easy to end up with stitches together that are all the, in the same direction. You're thinking, oh, hang yes. on a minute, you need to change direction. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's, that it's, it is, even though, you know, we're at the moment, we are recording this, but it's making me forget that we're actually doing a recording. And I'm really yeah, right? <laughs> Some people go quiet. Yes. I know that's what I'm like on our thing sometimes. Gary will say, Rachel, are you still there? And I go, yeah, I'm just enjoying myself. <laughs> just getting into it. Did you say earlier on the flower one that you were doing French knots? Yes. Because yes. I, I love a French knot. This would be fun with French knots, actually. Yes, it would yeah. be, wouldn't it? Oh, that would be amazing. I mean, that would take you quite some time, but yeah, yeah that would be a longer session. lovely to do. That would look beautiful. Well, Gary has um, created um, a little uh, stitch book. So he he's we've actually got it as a class. Uh, mm. And for anybody who is watching our YouTube channel, they get a discount. We should reveal the code, Gary. Should reveal the code. Should reveal the code in yes. this. 
um, yeah. because it's actually we've done the class it's a recording of the class so you can watch it at any time but it's actually it's it's called a doodle sketchbook so it's a stitch doodle sketchbook i've made a sketchbook out of cloth and then done a series of doodles within that so it's very i mean i haven't actually done this so this is um this is really new for anyone even if you've got the download of that sketchbook this is going to be something new that you could put in that little doodle sketchbook that would be lovely exactly. um, but, uh, lovely um and the idea was exactly how you you know what you were talking about being on a journey something like you say just as you're leaving the house you might throw a bit of fabric in your bag and some threads well with the doodle sketchbook you just have some loose pages in there and your thread ready and so you just pick up your doodle sketchbook and then you just take it with you and then just start to play in it and do different things so it is perfect well what you were saying is just is almost like the same really it's just the same sort of idea just contained within a sort of a sketchbook in a, in, a, in essential um yeah. but now i'm finding this the last one to try and get them all close together wow yeah hopefully i'm getting it but it's to think well i saw my third square but the way that i've gone i i, I can't i'm not sure how i do the fourth they're so close together <laughs> that's the challenge that's yes. the I mean, you could you could also overlap them. They don't have to be separate. That's true. Oh, right. So we can break rules. I like that. Yeah. Well, See, I've set my I'd set myself a rule that they all had to be set in their own space. But no, you're right. You could have them crossing over in the last one. They could really be jumbled up. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just thinking, you don't have to have squares. If you like to say, well, it could be a circle. You could actually just yeah. draw around. Um, you know, a circle like your cotton. Um real and just draw up draw that you just need some sort of zone it's just yes. a create zone that you stitch within the zone to create yeah. it you know what i'm thinking as well you know and this is a little bit outside the box boys but you know i mean i think when zoom came along you know and obviously when when covid was happening people couldn't leave the house so they were all it was a big joke wasn't it all over instagram and stuff people were just having zoom parties where you would just yes. a your bottle of wine and all sit there but I think, you know, um, sometimes there can be that whole thing of, oh, you know, if you do live away from friends, oh, should we get together on Zoom? And then you can all sort of stare at each other and think, oh, what do we say now? Or it's awkward conversation or people sort of talking over each other. Actually, this is a lovely thing to do. You could hook up, you know, with some friends yeah. uh, and do some mindful sewing together. Because, you know, as you're sewing, you will sort of naturally come up with conversations and it's actually a really nice thing to do you're not all staring at the screen then and staring at each other which is stressful in itself well it's like the worst, and natter, isn't it yes exactly absolutely the worst thing about zoom is that even as we're uh, filming this that i just end up staring at myself <laughs> which is awful yeah. I <laughs> um i uh, once a week since um lockdown period i um skype not zoom but with, with my mom and my brother every week and i always it's it's like my train journeys i was talking about i always think like what can i be sewing while i'm talking um because it's it's uh it's, well again it helps you relax and uh it, it, often, it, it often spurs on a conversation so you take you have so when you have a skype with your uh, family you have um you have something in front of you and you're stitching away while you're chatting yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, that's great. Everyone's quite used to it now, so. <laughs> yeah. And who taught you to sew, Russell? Was that a parent or a grandparent, or was it something well, you got to buy? Yeah, I mean, my my mother was a. Um, uh, I was gonna say she, she wasn't. She wasn't a dressmaker. That was my grandmother. She was a knitter. Thank you. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> I know so, your mother better than you, Russell. We, <laughs> <laughs> um, we. Did, there was always just needles and thread and sewing and making clothes and stuff in, in our house. So um, I just naturally picked up from there. I, when I was very little, I would sometimes do a drawing of whatever, Disney cartoons or whatever, and then just sew, sew around them. And, um, you know, uh, so that's really where I started, yeah. Um, so I'm done. <laughs> Is there a bad one? <laughs> I just got a little patch more to do. How's Rachel doing? How have you done? You've gone, you got, has Rachel got done? How far are you doing? No, I'm going to, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be quite behind you boys. Uh, that's all right. But I've got two and a, I've got two and a half squares done. No, yeah, two and a half squares that's done. Right. 
but I'm really enjoying this this third one because um, it's the really dense one. So I'm just enjoying doing lots of lovely little stitches. One of the things that I, I love about this and any sort of stitching is just to have a little look at the back. Um, I mean, I've got some longer bits, but um, I'm always interested in the um, uh, unintentional kind of patterns and things that you make. And yeah. it always doing this reminds me of, um, you know, the back of when you buy buttons and the back of the card, if they're on a card, the way they're sewn on it makes quite an interesting pattern yes. but it's not it's not meant to be anything obviously um so i always look forward to that little treat at the end when it's... and it's actually nice that you're not worried about the back actually because there were the yes. real like, hardcore embroiderers the back used to have to be as good or if not yeah, yeah, yes. yeah and mm. i just said that always that bothered me about embroidery because i think it well you know why why is that a problem one side could be the you know the side the intentional side to be viewed but then it was quite nice just like you said to have that the behind the scenes where you think ah oh look that's there's a loose yeah. thread there oh look that's crossed over there so um yeah i just i agree it was um the the back is very interesting i there's like that there's something very attractive about the naivety of it and yes mm. so you were saying that your it was your mother was a knitter and my the women in my family a lot were knitters as well you never yeah. you weren't did you have a go at knitting did that uh, did that appeal to you or not i can knit very uh I, now i don't i don't know which knit i do but i can do one knit and uh, it's not very good um <laughs> <laughs> i mean saying that i have um i have actually sold knitter in the past but it was very basically made it was very sort of punk it was made from rip, ripped up t-shirts nice yeah um, years ago but um yeah I, i'm not i i had a go at machine knitting recently which i really enjoyed but um i, I find it stressful when the machines don't work and everything yeah yeah um but no i haven't i haven't got into i have friends that love knitting they're obsessed um but i just it's not something that um and again part, that um, is a repetitive action and that you have to it's about tension again like we were talking about yeah. the tension of your thread pulling it through when yeah. you're a knitter you have to have the tension you know a certain um sort of like you can't pull it up too tight because otherwise your knitting comes very tight your stitches yes. become tight and then you make things end up making things 10 times smaller than what they need to be because it's also yeah. tight knit um but uh Okay, I, I mean, I don't knit, I don't crochet, and I would love to have the time to do that as well, but I just haven't. Yeah. But again, it's a very, it's that repetitive doing those stitches and knitting, which is again, really relaxing. That's why a lot of people, you know, used to, and a lot of women, you know, used to do knitting practically because it made garments and it would, you know, um, you could make jumpers or whatever. So there was that practical money saving element of it but also there was that just sitting in front of the telly or just sitting knitting chatting um, yeah. and it always amazes me how quite often a, a practice knitter or a crochet doesn't even have to look down at the stitches as they're doing yeah. it they're just there they could be knitting away they know exactly what they're doing um, I love to see that actually it's it's because it's it's like the the zenith of the skill when you can just uh, yeah that away and yeah well, Gary, I what? come to the end, and I'm not going to rethread because you come to the end. The well, end. We, I know. Well, I haven't, but we could be here another hour and a half, and no we one is. Could. So okay. I'm gonna, <laughs> I've I've put mine up on the screen. Lovely. Um, so I think it would probably go. I don't know which way it would go. Actually, I don't know if it would matter. That's nice. I yes. like that. It's standing you know, out. I'm quite pleased. Yes, I like it. With okay. That. It's getting okay. there, isn't it? I don't quite know how dense the last one would have to be because that's, I mean, they'd have to be probably crossed over. Yeah, you can make it just a big pile of them that's like a big mishmash. Yeah, but I like it. I'm for my first ever attempt, quite pleased with that. And I, I just had a thought you could do one in the last box, you could do one color and then a secondary color, like on yes. top. That's yeah. Well. Hello, that's what I've just done. So, Gary. <laughs> let, Gary, let nice. me just replace everybody with, let me just remove um, Russell and remove me so we can see yours. 
big screen. And okay, then so I don't oh, know if this this comes up. Can you yes, see? I can. I've done one yeah. single orange stitch, yeah. two stitches, then multiply to three stitches, then yeah. become four stitches. So okay. I don't know how clear that's shown up, but you could, you know, if you had a really, I only had orange next to me, but you know, if yeah. you did black on the on the cream and then did one red stitch, then two red stitches and that. And I just thought, hang on a minute. And I had the thread there, thought I'll do that, which Russell, you see that as well. So it's this yeah, is creative I, I minds alive. Yeah. <laughs> Always trying to think of the new, the new, the next step, the kind of, it's like when you buy whole grain rice and there's one bit that's not got, it's still got the, um, the brown bit on it. The husk on it. <laughs> the husk, yeah. No, I love it. <laughs> I have really enjoyed that, Russell. I mean, it's a Friday night is when we're recording this. Um, I do feel like, I mean, the weather is still nice for the, probably the mm. next few days. I think that's it then, it'll be turning. So I do feel like taking that out into the garden now with my gin and tonic and just finishing that off. And I love that idea of adding a different... Um, because I've actually got some red here, so I could throw in some red with the green. That would be quite cool. Um, but yeah, I really like it because, as you say, I think there's so many practices in that one because you've got the stitching and then you've got the different directions of the stitch, but you've also got to think about the next box. So you've got yeah. to be thinking, ah, you know, how many do I want to do on here? But as you say then, to introduce another colour as well, that's going to make it even more fun. So I absolutely, I love that one. And, I've, and I have and you know, I mean, I know Gary knew straight away what you were talking about when you were mentioning the words value and density. I didn't know what that meant. Um, but I love, I love the, the title that it is, you know, the value of just one stitch because I've just got a lot of value out of that one stitch. And I know that's not the, the classic meaning is we're talking about value in terms of how many stitches you have there and the density. But yeah, it's been lovely. Have you enjoyed being our first guest on our Tea Time tutorial? I have thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> Let's do it all again. Yes, well, you can. Please feel free to come back whenever you want and come and visit the house. We're always here. Uh, we would love to have you again, Russell. So for anybody who is following you on Instagram, it is Russell James Barrett. I will put it below. Um, and uh, do watch out for Russell in our class um, list as well, because Russell is going to be teaching a class with us. I think it's in November. Yes. November. So uh, that will be listed very soon on the website. Won't it, Russell? Yes. <laughs> and if anybody if anybody's watching this is now january uh because of course it's there forever on youtube uh, and you're thinking to yourself oh did i miss that class russell very kindly lets us uh record them so you could yep. go to our shop and you could download a class with russell there is one in our shop already i think from from you before which was the crazy dots the lovely little wonky dots and that was hand sewing as well and uh yep. and that was a lot of fun uh, well, listen, thank you so much, Russell. And thank you to you, Gary, as always, for playing a lot. The quietest I've ever known him. Hello. Um, and I have to say, it was, it, I was challenged. It was a challenge. I like, because normally I know what I'm doing. It's quick thunder that. But actually, I was really thinking about it. I, I just enjoyed it. And like I said earlier, at times I forgot I was actually being recorded on YouTube. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been a lot of fun. So thank mm, you so thank much. You. And of course, thank you to you, lovely YouTuber. Well, we should let you go now, Russell, um, and uh, and let you go, Gary. But thank you so much. And lovely YouTuber, uh, hop onto the next Tea Time tutorial. There's a whole playlist of them. And uh, look forward to our next guest because we've got lots of guests coming on with us in the coming weeks. Okay, we'll see you all later. Bye. Bye.